Welcome back. We are going over month eight stretches for pregnancy. This month we are focusing on rib pain and diaphragm pain, heartburn right. type <laughs> symptoms. Rib pain would be on the back side or even the front side. Maybe you're having a hard time taking a deep breath in. Yes. Um, during pregnancy, your rib angle changes. It moves upward to about 50%. So that's a lot of change. There's a lot of movement and mobility happening in your ribs, in that rib cage. And we are gonna go over stretches to tackle it. My name is Dr. Kasky. This is Dr. Dr. Mariah. Mariah. Thank you for joining us. So rib and diaphragm. And first and foremost, I want to start by talking about breathing. Now, was that month six? We chatted about breathing yes. in round, a round ligament video. So go back, catch that. But your diaphragm is your primary breathing muscle. So when you are breathing, taking a deep breath in, you should be filling your abdomen, your belly with air. You should not be feeling seeing your chest rise. Yes, chest breathers. Now, maybe this happens during exercise, right? We're just... Um, that's a strenuous thing, but <laughs> we may not be paying close attention to how we're breathing. And if you are a chest breather, anxiety, asthma, etc., we could notice more tension up here because we're using our secondary accessory muscles. We don't want that. So when you take a deep breath in, fill your abdomen, whether you exhale through your mouth or not, um, depends yes. on the amount of time and concentration you have. But keep in mind again, diaphragm lives under the rib cage, at the rib cage, yes. and we'll definitely be focusing on that area as well. Your core is essentially like a big can. Let's like think of something like a soup can. That's how I visualize it. So your diaphragm is dome shaped. That's the top of the can. Right. Then you have your lovely transverse abdominis on the sides <laughs> and the rest of your ab muscles. Right. You have your paraspinals. That's the back of the can. And then your pelvic floor is the bottom of the can. Right, almost you, a bowl. Yes, like curved top, curved bottom. <laughs> it's a curved can. It's like it's going to explode and you want it to explode and expand, expand. outward. Yes during your breath. Yes. So something else to think about if you're focusing on your breath, it could be really nice for you to be stacked rather than, yeah, right? Hunched. I've already closed off my space, my availability. So um, think about where you are, sit on your sit bones, be upright, sit on your knees. That was most comfortable. Yeah. Um, and I just take, focus, yeah, take some time there. Yes, pay attention to your breath. That's our point. Awesome. Let's go into stretches before we keep talking about breathing. Right. It's just so important, you guys. <laughs> the first one is a uh, oldie but a goodie. It's a good old eagle arm. Lovely yoga stretch. I am taking one elbow over another, wrapping my arms up and around, and then pulling my forearms to about parallel. I personally feel this stretch most in between my shoulder blades. Yes. Just taking some nice deep breaths here. This one feels so good. If you need bless, you can unwrap these lovely arms and then wrap them again. So Dr. Cassidy mentioned in between her shoulder blades, this might be that area where you feel like you have a knot in your back, which could of course, yes, be muscle tension, but that muscle tension could also be due to a rib that needs some movement. And that's where your breathing again comes into play. Um, if we wanted to switch maybe. Oh, good idea. I will, uh, it felt so good. <laughs> yeah. I will say, I believe it's proper keeping elbows up, which she talked about, but then maybe dropping to bottom arm if you want it if you can rotate your head towards bottom arm tuck your chin a little bit play around with that see how that feels for you yeah don't be afraid to move around your neck and just see where you feel the most tension hang out there for a few seconds next one we're going to call wide elbows it is a stretch but it's also an activation so find hands behind your head nice and neutral make sure we're not doing one of these big rib flares and you're going to take your elbows to the front to meet, squeeze them together, and then you open up real wide, retracting your scapula. Mariah, would you mind turning around? For Absolutely. Us? Awesome. So Mariah is going to squeeze her elbows together, stretching this lovely area. And then when she comes back, she's actively contracting these muscles. Pinching. I can feel that. Pinch, pinch, pinch. <laughs> and even if you can have someone like touch, yes. You can feel how activated to cue. Yes, those muscles. Lengthening is just as important as activating and strengthening, especially during pregnancy oh, and postpartum. Wow. A little bit of a bird there, you guys. That was good. Isn't that lovely? Thank you. Oh, tennis ball. Where yes. we a tennis okay. ball be? 
So, tennis ball, lacrosse. Oh, <laughs> <my. laughs> so I'm gonna use a. Oh, oh there's another. <laughs> I'm gonna use the wall. Yes. Simply finding that trigger point, that area that feels like there's a knot. Not. And I'm gonna use the wall just to kind of lean in. I'm gonna pull my arm across. That gets my shoulder blade out of the way. And then I'm just gonna roll around. And I'm gonna dig in. If it's too intense, intense for you, for that muscle knot, skip it, move on. But it should feel nice. So Dr. Cassidy is moving in almost a horizontal plane, kind of following the way that rib connects. Because yes. don't forget that your ribs attach to your sternum in the front. They wrap all the way around and attach to your spine in the back. So that is also why and where pending your symptoms, but that rib discomfort could be it's very Rapping. also very commonly in the front too, maybe pending babe's position, but you might notice some numbness or tingling there because skin is stretched, etc. So yes, it doesn't just have to be on the back, but wrapping because your ribs are here as well. Yes. And your first rib, you guys, is just below your collarbone. So remember that your rib cage just protects all those organs in there, those organs that are being displaced upwards. <laughs> yes. Um, and I just wanted to mention, when you are pinning that ball, um, yes, against the wall and your back, you can also, pending what you need, so she moved left to right, I will sometimes be here and just roll up and down. Pending muscle yeah, yeah. tension, you can follow the paraspinal. So you're Giving yourself muscle. that nice little hug, kind yes. of like I had dressed, drawn the one arm over it, that is going to move the shoulder blades out of the out way of the to get to the muscles that attach to your ribs. Exactly that. Um, and now we're going to talk about more of the diaphragm stuff because yes. we mentioned at the beginning that there was some heartburn symptoms that we were going to tackle. So your esophagus has to go through your diaphragm in order to get through your stomach, right? And so heartburn, some of that um, burning sensation that you might be getting even later in pregnancy, not tied to morning sickness, could be that ribs being displaced upward, yes. putting more pressure on your diaphragm, and then hence your esophagus causing that burning sensation. So we wanted to throw in some diaphragm massaging into this video, right? Also, don't forget during pregnancy you have relaxin, which allows that sphincter at the bottom of esophagus, top of your stomach, to not be so strong and tight so it can sit open a little bit more with the heartburn reflux piece. Now, diaphragm again right at your rib cage. So, being that stomach lives on the left, spend more time there if you have the heartburn and reflux symptoms, but we'll always encourage you to work both, okay? So, starting base of sternum, you are just going to follow your rib cage down and out. Um, this might almost feel better for you if you are reclined and relaxed. So prop some pillows up behind you, couch, bed. Yes. Um, but that's going to soften. Right now we're upright and we're stretching our tissue. Um, yes. So again, Even like side lying would be another nice, up, nice option. You could put your left side down, encourage that stomach to fully relax. The and then follow the ribs down and out. I personally enjoy a skin on skin contact a little Correct. bit better with like a bio freeze or a set of yes. some kind of lotion just to help that drag and really encourage lengthening it through your diaphragm. And again, please do both sides because touch it can be there. So. Yes. Cat cow yeah. next. Favorites. Gotta love it. So cat cow, we always want to stack our shoulders, our elbows, our wrists, right. our <laughs> hips to our knees. And I am going to use my breath to, with my motion. Inhale. Again, pushing through the scapula. Now, we love this, you guys, because don't forget, right, ribs attached to our spine and sternum in the front. This is a beautiful way to get mobility. So flexion and extension here. Flexion when she's in cat, so that's almost that slouching posture. Extension when she's in cow. When in office, when we're adjusting you, we use extension to help that rib, that head of the rib on the back side to get the movement it needs to hopefully alleviate some of that pressure. Um, so really beautiful technique here to again, take your time, use your breath, but you are gonna help mobilize not only your ribs, but your thoracic spine, right? So our mm -hmm. thoracic spine actually has the least rotation the further you twist, you're getting that rotation from your lower body, your lumbar spine, um, because that rib cage is connected there, so it can be pretty tough. From cat cow, my favorite, because that was flexion extension. 
So we're here and then we're going in to thread the needle. Now, per your comfort, you can keep arm here and looking up, but I get much more rotation if I keep my arm straight. Looking up, this again is giving me extension in my upper back for those first few ribs. Think one, two, three, into four, right? So mm -hmm. extension, then I'm coming through as far as you're comfortable with. This gives me that rotational piece. Absolutely, and you actually mentioned something that you also look up. Wherever you want to go, your gaze should follow. follow. That's going to Thank increase you. your mobility. It's going to help your brain realize it's okay to go there, right? Brain connects in many different ways. If we are doing something like looking where we would like to go, you're going to move better. That's awesome. And then, yep, through that arm and down. And as Maria mentioned earlier, don't be surprised if you're like, why can't I rotate as well? Yeah, it's pretty hard to rotate just your thoracic spine. You have a rib cage attaching to the front side and the back. Also pay attention to, well, we're talking month eight right now, so your range of motion may not be that good. <laughs> yes, exactly. We have belly to be worried about. And then we get to go into scapular push-ups. This is kind of the last piece to add a little bit more activation. So again, if you're pregnant, I would stick to hands and knees. But oh, oh, you can yeah. certainly, um, you know, do a wall if that's something that's easier for you. Where I, Other, will be, I will be on the wall. That's incredible. All knees, again, that lovely tabletop where everything is nice and stacked. And now I'm going to let my scapula retract, allowing my thoracic spine, my rib cage, my chest to sink. From here, I'm going to push up and away. And I'm sure you can see my thoracic spine almost looks like a little bit of a dome. Mm -hmm. The muscle that's doing that is your serratus anterior. It's incredibly important for shoulder stabilization. And doing these motions now is going to save your shoulders postpartum. I will say one of the hardest things here is to not bend your elbow when you let your chest fall to the floor. Exactly. You want to try and keep those arms straight, especially if this is a brand new movement to you. Now, I demonstrated this against the wall in almost the same height as Dr. Cassidy, but you can easily stand and do the very same thing. That's a nice way to try and get that movement, that retraction, protraction of the scapulas. But before we let you go, I have one modification for thread the needle. So if this piece of rotation is not comfortable for you because of belly, whatever it may be, you can stay seated on your knees, take that deep breath in, so remember in through the nose, and then as you exhale, just kind of goal post. Twist through what is comfortable. This is still rotation for that upper mid thoracic spine. Or maybe arms come out. <laughs> don't hit the wall, don't um, hit the person next to you. Don't hit your stretchy buddy. <laughs> that motion, you guys, that mobility will be really awesome to help alleviate. Come back for month nine of this program and we will teach you all the things about labor and delivery. Don't forget to subscribe.